you're a signatory, did that effort work? Effort work. Um, are we actually delaying the yes. development of AI? No, you really can't delay the development of technology. And there are people that are motivated for various reasons, largely financial, that are you know going to push it no matter what, and not say, oh, we're we're going to give up the effort you know that we're on and the path we're on. Not really, but. Um, as new technology brings the pluses and the minuses, and we're seeing so many examples of that in the news, in presentations that are being made about it. And when new technology brings big changes, sometimes it's be responsible. You know, think about both the pluses and the minuses, because I really fear, I believe more than anything else, the apex of everything that's good in the world is truth. Well, well, and what are the minuses? It. Why did you sign that open letter and petition? Well, um, largely it was, you know what? I'm a human being, and I'm more, less influenced by what I can, things I can read about does this and that examples I'm shown, but by people, certain people that I trusted. And the people I trusted were actually uh, going in this direction, and I wanted to be a part of it. And I do believe just in responsibility. Not that I'm scared of the bad sides of AI, which there are plenty to be shown, or it's going to really be helpful for us, which it is, but it's just... Um, Boy, in new technology, you should, you know, brings responsibilities. One of the co-signatories was Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk then founded XAI and has been hiring in the field for his own AI startup. Good. Following the petition, what do you make of that? I hope great comes from it. Um, I hope that basically holding it back from being used by bad people or, or just doing bad things on its own because of the influence it gets one's training. I mean, you know, this hallucinogenic and doesn't know what it's doing. I always think of dreams. And a lot of the things that comes by there are dreams. They kind of make some sense. They could be partly real. But dreams to me are um, schizophrenia. They talk about hallucinations coming out of AI. Um, schizophrenia, if you had dreams and you thought it was real, you experienced those things in life. In real life, you didn't know it was a dream. That's, what pos that's one possible explanation for schizophrenia. So I'm, um, I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm just on the side of truth. With the fact that um, the bad people in the world, the ones that want to spam us and get our passwords and take over our lives, they've got a new tool. Steve. And how are they going to be able to use it? And how can you be skeptical when you don't even know if it's coming from AI? Steve, those yeah. uses a phrase, hallucinating. Many say we're making it more powerful. We're encouraging people to think that AI is going to be more terrifying because we keep making it out to be sort of human in this manner. Do we need to change our turn of phrase? Do we need to sort of understand that this, at the end of the day, is still just technology? Oh, no, it's taken us a little further in what we can do as humans. If I'm fed a lot of good source information from AI and I'm a human editor and know how to use it and pass it on, oh, it's given, it's a great tool in our lives, but with a lot of good. Look at the social network and the movie of uh, Social Dilemma and, you know, a lot of good can bring a lot of also bad and being uh, tracked and traced and spammed and deceived. What if we had developed the Internet? with protocols in place that you could always identify anybody and the spam was almost impossible. Um, what if we have that chance to sit back and think about AI a little before it's here? We don't really have the chance, but um, it's, this, it's that sort of responsibility that I want to take the side of. But Steve Wozniak, of course, who is the Apple co-founder for our radio audience and TV audiences. Steve, people have anticipated this coming not just since november when ChatGPT sort of came into all of our consumer lives but you have seen round corners when it comes to technology yourself why weren't you worrying about this a year ago why when wasn't it on ChatGPT gpt version 3 that that started to make it all the more powerful mm -hmm. why now start to go to the administration why now start to go to companies to self-regulate uh it's basically based on news cycles now good five years ago at least. I mean, the book Singularity came out, and I was going around giving speeches for about three years about how um, uh, this new tech, the technology was going to take over the intelligence of humans and really uh, be, be, you know, we'd have companies running with no humans at all. And I backed off of that. You know, I got scared of that. Um, for one thing, it comes out always negative. Okay, technology... AI is going to take care of me so I will have all my food and all my clothing and all my shelter and my kids and my family and, and a lot of entertainment and I'll just be like a family pet, totally taken care of. Sounds like a good thing. So if I'm going to be a pet someday, I thought about it. What, how do I want to be treated? So that's when I started feeding my dogs filet steaks and <laughs> rotisserie chicken and stuff. No, it's honestly true. And this was a long time ago. For five years, it was a couple of years before I finally switched directions based on what one of my brilliant 
brilliant kid said to me. And you know what? All this great stuff in the world lets us do more as humans. When we founded Apple in those early days, one of my primary purposes was a person is only so capable. Give them the ability to use a computer and they can do more. They can be more in charge of where their life goes and be more capable. So I'm, I'm all for that. And I'm for change, but I'm also against things that can be used dishonestly. Like, right. the, like the woman who got a phone call and it was, you know, deep fake. It was her daughter's voice you know, pleading for money. And we, we, you know, some of us have already been hit up in the past with ransomware attacks and all that. Steve, I tweeted that you were coming on the show. A lot of questions from our audience. Thank you for sending those in. Why do we not talk more about Apple and artificial intelligence? <laughs> um, you, you know, I don't know. There's a, I don't know what's going on inside of Apple any more than anyone else. Apple may have some very deep programs going on artificial intelligence. Also, Apple's such a rich company that they kind of look around when there's something that may change the world that we're not developing, uh, we can usually assimilate it. We can, you know, acquire those, those people that are doing that. And, you know, I mean, look at what Microsoft did with uh, OpenAI. Who do you think leads the charge in that respect then? You, you know, Microsoft pretty much put us on the map at the beginning of this year because of the investment additional into OpenAI, yeah. then the integration of OpenAI, do you see mega cap companies leading the way? Oh, I don't try to pick a winner, a loser. Um, the next one around that could come out next week from somebody unknown and, you know, and be sort of a leader. Um, Chat GPT from OpenAI is really what turned us on into it as people. And you know what? Companies and all that, they don't move ahead because of knowledge. They move ahead because of motivation and emotions. And we should do this. We should do that. And this will fit in with our life and our, and our, our competitors and all that. And AI just comes from stuff that's already been published. They don't create. Creation is the way forward. And they don't really create new stuff. They just apply it, speak it very well, put it all together in a way that makes sense. And a human can use it to move forward and be creative and create new things, new products. Like, when is an AI going to sit down and say, oh, what should I create next that makes sense for the world of people? And it's always going to be, in the end, for people. You it's know, some people like to say, oh, AI will be the, ahead of us. Yeah. What then, you've almost admitted at the very start of this conversation that it can't be put back in its box. The signing of the letter sort of hasn't done anything to slow the direction of travel and technology. Would you like to see regulation? And is it self-regulation or government regulation? Okay, uh, Mira Mikata, whatever, the uh, CTO of OpenAI and... Uh, uh, and and Jeffrey, um, what's his name, that won the, uh, the, the Turing Prize, the Nobel Prize in Computer Science, both say, yes, there should be regulation and we should be very cautious about what's coming because you don't know how to handle such big change. I'm more worried than anything else about just like the spam and taking advantage of people points of view, the evil use of it. And, um, and uh, I hope we brought attention to the fact that uh, AI has some issues and uh, I would like to know everything I read. Did it come from AI? Then mm -hmm. I can be skeptical. And, if, and you know, because and, I like sureness. I like to read something. I, can I really believe this? I'm already, you know, old enough to be very skeptical anyway. Steve, before we lose you, what do you make of the Apple of 2023, the company that once you founded 30 years ago? Uh -huh. How do you assess its health? Well, I, I don't assess business health. I usually look at products. I know that it's a product line from Apple. It's very good. It's well supported. It's maintained. But I also look at the people that run a company. And, uh, you know, Tim Cook especially has been a long time a favorite of mine because of his cares for diversity among clients and employees and partners.